It's not actually a gun, it's some sort of Allen key thing. It's the closest thing I could find. So this is 007 Racing, a game released back in 2 Trebolo 2000 on the PlayStation 1, which was a little bit different to the other James Bond titles of that time. As you'd expect from the name, this one focuses on the cars, and being a Bond game, that means the Aston Martin DB5, the Lotus Esprit submarine car from The Spy Who Loved Me, and a few others that are featured in the franchise at some point or another. It also means they've been tinkered with by Q-Branch, so you'll be picking off baddies with machine guns. Ba -ba 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 -bam! or exploding other vehicles with missiles and firing lasers from the side of your car um... what sound effect does that have? Um, something like that? there's a whole bondy storyline with 12 missions to play through filled with shooting and explosions and exciting driving everything you could ever want from something called 007 racing sounds great what could possibly go wrong with that? I'm sure you've already noticed the graphics and, well, they're crap, aren't they? This is meant to be New York City, and just look at the state of those buildings. Have they been made with paper? All the scenery, everything's so flat and pixelated. Check out the traffic lights. I could draw something better on Microsoft Paint. It's all so basic. Bear in mind the PS1 had been around for five years when this game was released. In fact, the PS2 had just been launched around the same time, so surely they could have done a bit better with it. It's like they made it back in the mid-90s, then forgot to release it. The cars aren't so bad, I guess. They are somewhat recognisable as to what they're supposed to be. However, as for James Bond himself... <laughs> oh my god, how could they do that to Pierce Brosnan? Speaking of Pierce, rather unsurprisingly, they couldn't get him to voice Bond for this game. But they did manage to get John Cleese to voice R, as he was back then, before he became Q. Steady now, 007, that's your target. Do not engage, but keep him in range. He talks to you during the missions, mainly to have a whinge about how you're ruining his precious cars and that you're an incompetent Muppet. For the sake of the car, 007, return fire! It's quite entertaining the first time you hear his lines, although if you need to keep replaying a mission, you do end up getting them again and again. There's a few other returning characters as well, such as Jaws, for some reason which doesn't seem to have anything to do with the plot. He's launching mortars from the boat in the River Race mission. Xenia Onotop is in it too, the assassin from Goldeneye. Incidentally, I know the Bond films are known for their blatant innuendos, but whoever came up with the name Onotop, it's not exactly subtle. They may as well have called her Boobs McTits. In this, Boobs is driving a Ferrari in the escape mission, in which we have to race her to a parachute so we can gently glide down into a dark chasm, while everyone else accepts their inevitable deaths by chucking themselves off the cliff too, instead of, you know, stopping at the top. In fact, the whole story makes very little sense. I struggled to follow what was going on while I was playing through. Even now, having completed it and read the synopsis on Wikipedia, I'm still not really sure what happened. However, I'm going to try and explain it to you through the power of a montage. We start by blasting our way into a castle building in Eastern Europe to rescue Charisse Litter before racing to escape while not one, but two helicopters explode on us. Bond survives this. We get away and head back to MI6, where M tells us that while we were gone, some baddies pinched a load of weapons off a ship, and we must go and meet up with the Americans to work out what we're going to do about it. Upsettingly, on arrival in New York City, some bloke with a German accent calls us to tell us that our hire car has been fitted with a bomb, which will blow up if we drive too slowly. Does that remind you of any other film? To help with our precarious plight, the Americans have scattered transmitters in random locations across New York, which will delay the bomb going off for a few extra seconds, giving us the time we need to drive it into the Hudson. Bond survives this. Still in New York, we're sent to track down an electromagnetic pulse device, this blob of pixels, from a distribution centre, which is being guarded by respawning cars and two forklift trucks which seem invincible to missile fire. Once we're inside, we grab the device, use that to destroy some computers, and then drive out of the window to begin chasing a car transporter, the driver of which we want to interrogate. 
We laser his tyres, stop him and find out that we need to go to Mexico because, well the game doesn't say, but off we go to pick up some mine packs from random bridges, blow up an airbase and rescue this dude, who turns out to be Valentin Zukovsky, the guy from Goldeneye and the world is not enough. He tells us that the person behind all this villainy is Dr. Hammond Litter, the dad of the woman we rescued in the first mission. Saving her was all a clever diversion while the shit was being burgled. Oh, and she's evil too. Next we do the race with Mrs. McTitts and drive off the cliff as mentioned earlier, before being captured and taken to some facility in Louisiana with Melody Chase, a new character who suddenly appears in the game with no explanation. We drive a remote controlled BMW out of a warehouse using the security cameras, blowing up a bunch of the stolen tech from the ship along the way. Somehow we also escape with Melody, I've no idea if we were in the car or not, and find ourselves chasing Charisse Litter on a boat with Jaws while dodging mortars, before eventually exploding them. Back in New York, we track down four limos which, rather conveniently, have left their Bluetooth on and we can pinch the data we need to work out what Hammond's up to. Apparently he's trying to release a deadly virus on the world. That sounds scarily familiar these days. Then it's time to infiltrate the Bad is Evil base under the sea, where we dodge the security lasers, rescue Melody, drop a bomb and outrun the explosion. Bond survives this. Now for the grand finale, where Hammond is trying to escape with his virus on a plane. Of course our Lotus Esprit can easily keep up with an accelerating aircraft, so we ram the four engines until they break, and then missile the front wheels as it powers towards us, before we escape the presumably exploding plane by plunging ourselves into the Baltic Sea. Bond survives this, gets his end away with Melody, and that's that. See you in the next film. <sighs> that took longer than I thought to go through. Aside from at the start and end, there's no cutscenes to explain what's actually happening. You get a bit of dialogue at the start of the missions, but it's mainly about your current objectives rather than the story. I have to say though, as an idea for a PlayStation game, it's a pretty good one. In theory, this should be awesome, focusing on the driving elements of Bond with some pretty interesting mission ideas. All the levels are fairly unique. I suppose 007 Racing is a bit of a misleading title really, because apart from the Honor Top mission, you're not actually racing anyone. It's a lot more like Driver, but obviously that's not a bad thing. But while the basic idea is strong, the game itself is... Uh, you see, it's not awful, and if you look past the terrible graphics and confusing story, it could still have been a really fun game, but it's badly let down in one area. The handling of the cars is just dreadful. They are so difficult to control, and you find yourself constantly fighting to stay in a straight line. This is especially noticeable on the river race level, as you're trying to avoid mortars dropping from the sky, oncoming traffic, and falling into the river, which causes instant death, all while driving fast enough to beat the boat to the end and picking up enough ammo along the way. Even with decent controls, and a competent player, that would be a lot going on, and this one took me a fair few attempts to get past. In truth, the missions themselves aren't particularly difficult, but the horrible controls make them unnecessarily tough, and ultimately annoying. There's other little problems it has too, like when you're setting off mines in the airbase, they'll always take some health off you, no matter how quickly you drive away, and how far you get from them. And New York City being impossible to navigate when you're trying to track down the limos. They always seem to be on the other side of a block of buildings with no way through. If it wasn't for the dodgy controls, I could have liked this game a lot more. Crap graphics and weird storylines can be charming when you look back on something 20 years later, but overall the two and a half hours I spent completing this was just too aggravating. Whew, I could do with a drink after all that. Martini, shaken, not stirred. I'm afraid all we have is lager, Mr Bond. Fine, lager, shaken, not stirred. You're the boss. Thank you. Now that's what I call an explosive ending.